rich and flowery. Yeah. We American just deleting you this person. Oh. They're so rich theologically. Oh, let's get our breakfast for a minute. Welcome everyone to church today. Good to be here in the house of the Lord. Let's go ahead and talk about some prayer requests while we're getting our breath. We'll sing a couple more songs in just a minute. But let's hear what God's doing in our lives. We worship Him today in spirit and in truth. So good that we have a God who is not just a distant God, someone we worship from afar, someone who can't be known, but He's intimately involved in our lives on a day-to-day, hour-to-hour, minute-to-minute basis. Yeah. He doesn't hold us at arm's length. He invites us to draw near. The Bible says to draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. One way we do that is by caring and sharing with each other. So let me know what God's doing in your lives and in your families today. Anyone got a report? Mark, sometimes yes, ma'am. when you go to a church, you call them your church family. Uh huh. And they're church family while you're in the church. Right. But I am so blessed to say that my church family is my family in the church, outside of the church. Oh, hallelujah. Had yes. a little incident yesterday. Um, and Joan and Jan and Larry came to my rescue. They did. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank, God. Thank God. We are family. We are family. We are family. And God I mean, has... And they, they were as concerned as I was. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so yeah. much for telling us that. That builds my faith. It builds yep. all of our faith. Amen? Amen. And God did it for you. He'll do it for us. And we do it for each other. Yep. Because we're His hands and we're His feet. Glory to His yep. name. Who else? That's for a sustaining grace, too. Amen. Absolutely. The strengthening grace. This has been a great week. Absolutely, it has. It has. Craig, tell tell us what's going on in your family. Uh, Well, uh, I'm trying to get my data straight. Ann's uncle went to sleep one night, didn't wake up. Hmm. Um, Was not expected at all. I mean, he was. No, he was doing fine the day before. Uh, they had visited till about 8.30 at night the night before. And um, his daughter, his son had been there till about 8.30. Mm-hmm. His daughter came the next morning to check on him, you know, just as a normal thing she does. And he wasn't sitting in his chair in the living room. Mm-hmm. She went in and he was in his bed. Well, yeah. passed on. Yeah. Well, three days later, uh, the youngest sister, who also lives in Charlotte, well, he lives in Concord, she lives in Charlotte, uh, he, uh, they took her to the hospital because she was having problems with her heart. Mm-hmm. They had diagnosed her with a, a bad heart problem. Nobody said what it was, but anyway, they were trying to get her strong so that she could have the operation. Mm -hmm. As weak as she was, she couldn't have the operation. Well, about three days, almost to the hour, she passed away. That was what, three days after the uncle? So, uh, that this weekend we'll we'll be going to two separate funerals. Oh my. I know one's in Charlotte. Where is the other one? Concord. Concord, okay. Is that it's about close enough? 18 miles apart. Okay, okay. I wasn't sure what the logistics were of that. And man, the, yep. y'all, your family just been hit hard. Very hard. And you're just getting over COVID, and Ann just got over COVID. You made it through. But thank God, but Lord, we've been praying for y'all. And on top of that, the day that he passed, his daughter in law went in for surgery. Oh, my goodness. Uh, had a double mastectomy. Oh, Lord. So oh, no. they've had more than their share. Yes, they had. And, uh, also, keep Ann in your prayers. She's, uh, they'll be getting on a plane about three in, in Dallas and coming home. So. Absolutely. Ann told us that on Wednesday, what had happened. And my heart just broke for her because I related to it so strongly because she's very close to those uncles and aunts. Now, some people, uncles and aunts are more distant. My family was like that. I, just about any of my uncles or aunts, I could have showed up on their doorstep with my suitcase and stayed with them as long as I wanted to. That's how we were. Yeah. It's just family. And I sensed that about Anne. To lose two beautiful people in your life like that within three days of each other. Well, these are best brothers and sisters, right? And Beth is the oldest. Yeah. yeah. 
I saw that uh, picture of them all together. That was so precious and so sweet. She, uh, we, you know, we, we felt like with her disease, mm -hmm. as, as it's progressed, this we one. felt like it would not be good to tell her. No. Oh, yeah. She wouldn't know how to handle it. And when she forgets and you tell her again, it's like reading it all over again. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, uh, I, I think we've, logistically, we've decided that we can't make both funerals and take care of her. Yeah. yeah. So Ann and I'll probably go Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, and the funeral is like 3.30 in the afternoon, so we may stay over. Okay. We may not make it to church on Sunday, but uh, the aunt, her aunt, will be buried on Friday, and her uncle will be buried on Saturday. Okay. Well, you know our prayers are with you. Please let us know if you think of anything that we could help with. Like, we're the family, right, Linda? Yeah. Absolutely. And we're ready to stand ready to help in any way we possibly can. And I just wish there was something we could do to bear that burden. But we will, in prayer and in spirit, let the Lord just speak through us and and uh, and discomfort y'all during this time. Well, they, they were both having medical problems. Mm -hmm. So it's not completely out of the realm. You yeah. know, we, we, we knew it, it was a possibility. Sure. It was kind of kind of sudden when it did happen when both of them. Absolutely. You know, within three days. Wow. I just went to get it. Yeah. yeah. Hold it near. Mm -hmm. Thank God for his mercy and his grace. He's always with us through the time of trouble. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Beverly. Uh, yesterday in Iowa, uh, they had a celebration of life for a guy that was in my class when I graduated. And um, there weren't very many of us to start with, but now there's a whole lot less. But then a shock came this last week. A dear friend who used to cut my hair she was in her 50s. All of a sudden, Thursday, they rushed her to the hospital. She had septus. Mm. It only, it just started, but she passed very, very sad. Oh my goodness. She passed away on Saturday, I think. What was her name, Beverly? Sue Plothman. Sue Plothman. We will pray for her family. And she was a wonderful person. She was so kind and sweethearted. So you lost two friends. Oh, yeah. Well, about four of them all of a sudden in the last few months. Wow. So, but, and I don't have any aunts and uncles left. I, I have of, one. Out of 17, I have none left. Yeah. My dad was the youngest of 13. Mm -hmm. And then my uncle and my mom were the two oldest of her side of the family so my mama's baby brother is still with us and he's 76 and yeah, yeah of course i know he's in good health i haven't talked to him in a while but yeah i had i had like you said a huge family on both sides and they both yeah. old passed on this hard yeah oh yeah it's hard we to were, see the people you love we were all very close one of my dad's brothers he would come to town and even after i got married he'd come to town and we'd go out for lunch and mm -hmm. visit so, and uh, we're still real close with his kids. Mm -hmm. So, thank God for relationships. Oh yeah. Grieving is is a part of loving, and grief has a process in our lives. I believe that God gives us that so that we can express our grief and, mm -hmm. and let Him shepherd us through that time. Oh yes. He can, he can he can just make our hearts so strong, and uh, thank God for His care and His love. So. Miss Morris, how's Mr. Morris doing? Well, he's about the same. His back still gives me some problems in his leg. I took him in to get an x ray this week, but they didn't find anything really. But mm -hmm. they just set up some medication for me. But so far, it's really not helping all that much. Well, tell him we are. I'm not sure what we're going to do. Well, we keep praying. Keep praying. We love him. Tell him we love him and miss him. Appreciate you being here today. Miss Brenda, how are you feeling? How's your issues? I was uh, dog sitting and house sitting again last weekend. I heard this week. Oh my! Now, the last time I was there, I fell. Yeah. So, I, I did okay this time. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, they're saying um, they're ready to take out my kidney stones, and Walt don't want me to do it. <laughs> when you read all that stuff that it can do to you. Yeah. And yeah. I swear you won't be losing my kidney.
Get them out. Yeah. Yes. I guess so. Did you have less than the trip seat? Every time except the first time. I did the, well, my first one, but it didn't didn't totally take care of it. it, it I think it loosened it and helped it to pass. But yeah. Uh, anyway, thank God. Thank God we keep praying for you. Hey, Glenda, how are you feeling? Good. Have you had any more infusions or anything? Or? No, I haven't. You get two at a time. Okay. A week apart. I mean, one. Two of them a week apart. And I think I'm feeling a little bit better, but it takes about a month yeah. before it kind of kicks in. But uh, yes, I walked a lot further yesterday than I could have two months yeah. ago. <laughs> well, you know, I saw, I saw you when you came into church today, you just had a different look about you. And I, I felt like the Lord was telling me you, uh, you are feeling better. I'm feeling a little better, yes. Thank God we celebrate that with you today. Absolutely. Step by step, step by step, day by day, he's helping us. Well, after I seen you mm -hmm. with uh, Miss Willene, uh -huh. I was parked back here, and I come back to take her home. And here these two are just getting out of their car, so I gave them a ride back down there. Yeah. And, well, I meant you were a blessing, too, yes. <laughs> there comes Larry and Joan right now. Yeah. Yay, amen. 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 I didn't ex I told Jan, I said, I really don't expect to see you tomorrow. She was, she was... Ailen yesterday, she was so busy. She yeah. was getting real oh, they tired. Were, they were working out there. They were from yeah. early to late. So, yeah. Misty. I got a face. Yeah. I got a scale that on Saturday. I got to have a pound of yep. She's lost 67 pounds total wow. in 11 years. So. That is a great oh, thing. Yeah. And you're keeping it off. That's the main yeah. thing. Yeah. A little bit, little bit at a time. Keeping it on. Yeah, what you said is true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I exercise sometimes. I know you do, and you're taking care of yourself, and that's wonderful. That's what God has called us to do. And I'm trying to help me to lose weight. Yeah. And I'm going to get up at it. Yeah. And he's me to eat the food I'm taking out. Yeah. I'm the food police. Well, we, we all, Angie's my food police. Yeah. So I, sometimes I get arrested too. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes the skills will tell on you. That's right. That's right. Let's go ahead and see what's going on with him. Um, tell me what's going on in your life. Amen. It's, uh, it's rolling. God's working. Yeah, yeah, God's working. Rolling, Amen. Rolling, rolling. Wow. Angie's not here today because she's feeling a little, little uh, under the weather. She, uh, her stomach problem is not doing good today, so I told her to take the day off, stay at home. So she's relaxing at home for a little bit today, maybe watching us. We got several folks watching us today. I know online. Let's think about them while we're uh, still in our prayer time. Chet's out there in the truck somewhere today, and he told me 100% of the time I can count on it. He's watching us. He's out there on the road watching us. We're praying for his safety and his uh, path to be made straight by the Lord. Ginger is. Have you talked to Ginger Beverly? Uh, she had to work yesterday. Had to work. Yeah, she's working at uh, for Boris Head. Okay. Uh, handing out samples at the grocery store. Okay, so she's actually able to, to do that. That's yeah. really good. Yeah, she. I think she said she worked three hours yesterday. Well, fantastic. The Lord's helping her every her, day. Uh, her hand still isn't uh, healed, and they're mm -hmm. talking about using some kind of a growth mm -hmm. machine on her thumb. I don't understand, but... Ginger, if you're out there, we're praying for you. So glad to hear this. This is, this yeah. is great news. Yeah, she's doing better. Back at work part time. So. Yeah, part time. Thank God. Um, Bill and Terry are out there. Terry's watching us every week, and I'm sure Bill's there in the background too. So thank God for them. We're blessing you guys today. Miss Linda Aaron over at Iris Place always watches us every day, and we're thankful for her presence and her uh, prayers. And who else do we need to think about today? Tony and Jan are probably watching us somewhere. Uh, Jane L and Dane may be watching us, and Miss yeah. Willie. Yeah. They uh, we found out this morning, uh, right before the church got ready to go the lake, that uh, my cousin Sully was killed uh, at a motorcycle accident. They don't know anything. Uh, it wasn't no other vehicle involved in it at all. He got the call off. Everybody was riding uh, yesterday afternoon. And he just cut around the curve and laid on his sled in the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. The bike was 
you know, where it was slid type of thing, but it didn't you had to run off the road or, or anything. They don't know you any details. They don't even know what to call the test. Wow. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yes. What's the family name? Uh, it would be Wayland. Wayland. Uh, Ryder is, is his son. It's the son that is Ray and Bonnie Ryder are the parents. Ray and Bonnie Ryder. 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 They live in South Georgia. And he's been raising really bad health. I'm not sure if he can take a flight to Colorado. Oh, my. Wayland is in his mid forties, so I mean he's you know, he's rode motorcycles his whole life. So mm. Lord touched it, and I prayed. Jesus, oh, yes, so sad, so so heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, God's peace. Well, another no, and the same thing I told you about my pastor last week mm -hmm. up in Iowa. Well, he got to come home. He's mm -hmm. in, in Casey. And, but his wife is going to be stuck in the hospital in South Dakota for another three months or more. Mm -hmm. So I know it's the same type of deal. They both were on their motorcycles, and all of a sudden, nobody else was involved. They had that wreck. They have the pastor. Yeah. In Iowa? Yeah. Cliff Speck. Cliff Speck. Marianne that helped me with her, my boot mm -hmm. sitting up and stuff, Marianne. Her uncle died this past week. He'd been in COVID. Uh, he'd been in the hospital for a month with COVID and pneumonia, and he was about 72 years old. She considered that very young still. Yeah. And um, anyway, he was succumbed to I'm so sorry the pneumonia. It was just, he told his son that he was ready, and he, and he was baptized. Mm. Oh, praise God! Yes, praise God. Um, not to change the subject, but the festival was successful for you. Yes, it was the best one I've ever had. So. I thought it was. I, when I left, you were doing really well. I figured you were going to do anything any better. So uh, it's the best one I've ever had. So. <laughs> a lot of work, but it's worth it. Isn't it? We get too old for this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you don't tire me out just thinking about it. When I saw all that stuff you had out there in that trailer and sitting out there for hours, but it's fun, too, I know. But well, yeah. Anna had to leave, and um, Marianne had to part of another funeral, part of the funerals last night. And yeah. They have several stages of funeral. Yeah. Know, Catholic? Catholic and, you know, part of the family. So mm. part of them's. Um, Baptist, part of his Catholics, so yeah. kind of do the mixture of yeah. stuff. And, uh, and that's when she said he was baptized and accepted Jesus. So I said, so Baptist? <laughs> and then she, yeah. it, she said that part. <laughs> but um, it, they had to leave. So then Ashley, the, you met her at the party, mm -hmm. too. She, was, she just came to see it. But she volunteered to stay because it was just going to be me and Larry backing up. Yeah. Kind of, and, I, and I have a lot of stuff. Yeah, you do. It, I was amazed how much stuff you have. Yeah, Jan did really well too. <laughs> Jan was doing really well too. So we thank God for that. Community's fun, community's a celebration. Some people asked where we're going to sing, but they didn't even have singing this time. Apparently, the stage wasn't set up. So. Oh, yes, they had singing. Was it? Yeah. Well, it, was it was late. late. It, it was a thing. It was late. It okay. was a street dance and late. Well, yeah. And most of, most of the people that were singing, um, I mean, most of the people I've, I've had to, to the restroom. Yeah. Most of the people there, I thought, well, they're in their 80s. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a special deal with them. Yeah. What so there's a time? lot of the 60s music. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and have our prayer time as we're uh, moving on to the service. Let's uh, speak to the Lord privately. Let's all just have our private prayer time. And private is not always private. Sometimes you may want to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. May just want to speak his praises, and that would bless somebody so much. It would bless me, I tell you that. So feel free to speak his name. Yes. Um, this week, keep us in your prayers, all of us. Uh, we're, uh, Thursday, all three of my sons and their other son, their girlfriends and partner, whatever, and, and Larry and I are taking a family trip. Okay. Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> family trip. 
Yeah. That can be fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> going to be in an extra large van or what? what no, they're going in individual vehicles, but they're, we're staying in a condo unit together okay. oh. for five days. But everybody's got a great Oh, oh. <laughs> I could stay with two of mine. That third one. Yeah, very vocal. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Y'all uh, seek the Lord while he may be found and join me in a season of prayer, if you will. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. Lord, you've been so good to us. Oh, you've been so good. We just want to thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Praise you. Oh, even when we were dead in our trespasses, you've made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. By grace we have been saved. Jesus, you made us your own. You're working in our life every day. You're not distant. You're intimately involved in our lives, Jesus. Thank you for that. Oh, Jesus, we love you. Stay at the United Methodist Church worship you today, Lord. We love you. We come together to worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. You alone are worthy to receive praise and honor and glory. Thanksgiving forever, Jesus. You're the Lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world. You're the one who is worthy to loose the seven seals in heaven, Lord, as you consummate the ages. And Lord, we love you and we are in all of your power, yet you're tender as our shepherd, Lord Jesus. Oh, you shepherd us so gently. Lord, we left prayer requests to you today. I think about the young family, Lord, the extended family, Anne's aunt and uncle, both passing within three days of each other, Lord. I just, I grieve with them, Lord. Oh, I heard the pain in Ann's voice when we talked on Wednesday, Lord, and I know that she is uh, with her sister today, Lord. They're processing that, God, and I pray they may be watching us, Lord. Oh, we just give our hearts to them, Lord. We bear those burdens with them, Lord, for her family, God, for Miss Beth and her condition, Lord. I pray that you would minister to her, minister peace to her and to Anne and her sisters and Craig and all people who are involved in, in this grieving process, Lord Jesus. I pray that you draw their hearts so very close to you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we speak peace in the midst of trial and trouble, Lord, and grief. Lord, peace, peace that flows like a river. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for peace. Lord, I pray for you just to touch everyone involved in that family, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, for Joan's family going on this family trip, Lord, Sounds like a wonderful time together. Lord, I pray you would make it a wonderful time, Lord, that you would cause everybody to come together, Lord, that when this trip is over, they will be so, so grateful for their family, Lord, that they will just, it will just be another milestone in their family history, Lord. So thankful for what you're going to do on this trip. Keep them safe, I pray, Lord. Lord, Beverly's had a couple of friends to die, Lord, and we want to ask for your, your, your help and your mercy and your grace in those lives, God, those families. And, she mentioned, Lord, as we grow older, we lose more and more of our friends, Lord, people we went to high school with. And Lord, it can be it can be daunting sometimes, Lord. It can be lonely. It can it can feel like we're just consumed by grief. But Lord, we know that you're with us. We know that you're going to carry us through this life, Lord, and that death in this life is only temporary, God, because we have eternity with you, Lord Jesus. And I'm so thankful that we can count on that, that we understand that these light afflictions that we have in this life are just working in us a great eternal glory. And you created us for your kingdom and for your glory forever, Lord. I pray that you would comfort these people with these words, Lord. And if they don't know you, Lord, the, the people that uh, remain, Lord, in those families, that they would draw their hearts very, very near to you and hear your voice today before it's too late, Lord. Lord, I think about Mr. Morris is home with his back, Lord. The doctors are having a hard time figuring out what's going on. I know that backs can be uh, very difficult to diagnose, Lord, but they are so painful, Lord. They are so excruciating at times. Lord, I pray for him right now in Jesus' name. I pray for healing for his body, God, in Jesus' name. Raise him up, Lord, I pray. Thank you for Ms. Morris being here today. Lord, I think about Ms. Brenda. I want to be going for kidney stone removal, Lord, uh, whatever process they go through. God, I pray that this would be the end of those kidney stones, that she would see the relief, Lord, that you would just supervise the whole medical process, Lord. And by your stripes, Lord, we're healed. Lord, I ask for your healing upon all who are sick and all who need help today. Lord, for um, Cliff Speck, Beverly's pastor that passed away, I pray for his family, Lord, in Jesus' name. Uh, Larry's cousin's son, Lord, this Wayland uh, gentleman, Lord, that passed away as a result of a motorcycle accident. Oh, my Lord, we're so grieved for him right now, for his whole family. 
Lord, I pray that you would just bring peace in the midst of this storm in their lives. God, it just seems uh, he's so young, Lord. It just cut down in the prime of his life. It would seem, God, by something that's almost random as we see it, Lord. This world is filled with trouble and heartache, and but we don't always understand it. But we, we, we can't comprehend it, but God, we understand that you hold it in your hands, Lord, and that you will, through this, Lord, that if people will allow you to, that they will draw their hearts so very close to you, Lord. And God, in the end, they'll know you more and know you as, your, as their gentle shepherd. Lord, I pray that you would just bring peace to that family right now. Bring peace to Larry, Lord. I sense his brokenness this morning. Lord, that he, uh, he loves this guy, Lord, and I'm so thankful, God, that he has has family that he loves and God I pray that you just minister peace do you do what you do Lord Jesus we thank you for that um, Lord for uh, others God there may be others who God I may be maybe missing some or I may be uh, overlooking some oh, you never miss anyone you never miss anyone Jesus and I'm so thankful for that God I pray that you would touch us in this church well I thank you for what you're doing here in the state of God I get excited every week about coming to church Lord, I sense that other people do too. And Lord, I believe you're doing something here. God, you've given us vision. Lord, you've made us a part of a couple of ministries now. And Lord, I believe that you're going to birth more things in our hearts, Lord. More things that we can do. More things that we can walk in, Lord. More things that you can, can bring to our minds and to our ability to accomplish financially and physically, Lord. That you, we would be your hands and feet in this world. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing for us as a church. We bless you. We thank you, Lord. And God, we invite people here, Lord, people that would come, people who are disaffected from other churches possibly that have not found a place where they fit in or a place where they're accepted and loved, Lord. We call to them, Lord, in the spiritual realm, Lord. We love people, Lord, and we will accept them here. We will bless them, Lord. We will lead them to the foot of the cross, Lord. We will preach the truth of God to them, Lord, and you'll change hearts. Lord, I pray you bring sinners to our door, Lord. We don't just want clean, nice uh, fresh faced people coming, Lord. Bring whoever you will, Lord. People who are hurting, people who are in need, Lord. People who, who need to know Jesus, people who are lost in their sins, Lord. We will be so, so thrilled to be able to share the gospel with them, Lord, and to lead them to the feet of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for a state of it. We thank you for what you're doing here in our lives. Lord, now we pray as Jesus taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Craig, would you grab our offering plate back there for me? If anybody has not had the offering plate uh, presented to you yet, just raise your hand and... Craig will wait upon you as he comes forward with the offering plate today. Anyone at all. Thank you for your faithfulness. I try to think of a different way to say it every week so I don't sound like a broken record, but I just can't say it any better than the fact that you people love Jesus and you love God and you love this church and you don't mind doing what he asked you to do. So our bills are paid. Everything that we do is covered because of his riches and glory in Christ Jesus being poured out upon us according to his promise. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray for this offering right here. Um, Tony, would you bless it for me? Thank you, Lord, for this day, for your blessing, and for all that you've done for us. Thank you, Jesus, for the honor and glory. In Jesus' name, for this word. Amen. Amen. Play that song there for me. the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated in God's house. We've only sang one song today. We need to get back. We need to sing a couple of songs. And we just need to program that in because I like to hear y'all sing. Sing with me. What have we got, Tom? We got 64 in, uh, in uh, United Methodist Hymnal. 64. I checked these and most of them are also in Coast Barriers. You got to look up that name in the Coast Barriers. 64. 64. Holy, holy, holy.
seven. Miss Rita, you had one too, didn't you? No, I didn't hear what you said. Oh, I said this. We say we say we want you to we want you to do it. Three sixty seven. Oh yeah. <laughs>
tone. Y'all ready to hear some preaching? Amen. I'm ready to preach. I've been thinking about this all week. I love it. You think I like to preach? <laughs> I do. I enjoy it. Well, I hope good. you uh, hear from the Lord today because the Lord's really been speaking some things in my heart. Yeah. We uh, started a series on Hebrews last week. We launched into Hebrews chapter 1. And we went verses 1 through 4. I'm going to go section by section. And the rest of the chapter pretty much flows together as a unified whole today. So I'm going to be starting with verse 4. Hebrews chapter 1. And we talked a little bit about last week how the book of Hebrews is anonymous as far as we know. We're not real sure who wrote it. Some people say Paul. Other people say Apollos. Other people say it could have been some of the other church leaders in the first century. But dear friends, it is powerful word. There is no greater revelation in the New Testament of Jesus Christ, of his person and of his priestly work that God used him to accomplish so that we could be saved. It's the very essence, the very core theology of our salvation when we understand that he was a high priest who came to give himself for us. Nowhere in history, nowhere in religious history had anyone ever been both the priest and the sacrifice. He laid his life down so that we could have life. Amen. Amen. Glory to his name. Let's read some scripture here this morning. We'll begin in verse 4 of Hebrews He's talking about Jesus. He said, so he became far superior to the angels. I'll pause right there just for a second. Far superior yeah. to the angels. As the name he has inherited is excellent beyond theirs. For to which of the angels of God did he ever say, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all of God's angels worship him. Now about the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds, his servants, flames of fire. But about the sun, he says, your throne, O God, endures forever and ever, and justice is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you above your companions with the oil of joy. Yeah. And in the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth. And the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe, like a garment. They will be changed, but you remain the same. Your years will never end. Yet to which of the angels did God ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not the angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Oh, friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Glory to your name, Lord. Help us, Lord. Oh, this is powerful and this is deep, Lord. It's the very mechanics, the very workings of our salvation, Lord. You're demonstrating the superiority of Jesus in our lives. Lord, let us drink it in. Let us hear the truth of God today. Lord, let it change our lives. Give us utterance and revelation knowledge. We receive it gladly and with joy in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I forgot to write this in your bulletin. If you look at those notes there, normally I put the essence of the lesson in a sentence. And this is a little bit complex. You may want to write it in. But I want to start here. I want to lay the groundwork for what I want to speak to you about today. Coming straight out of the first chapter of Hebrews. I want to talk about angels today. You already figured that out. Angels. Angels are, here's a word for you, interdimensional, heavenly beings. They're created by God to serve His people, His power, and His program. Have a little outline right there. His people, his power, his program. Angels are interdimensional beings, meaning that they come and go throughout the dimensions just as spiritual beings. They may present in a body at one time and they travel at fantastic, amazing speeds. They are ministers of salvation that God sends forth to do his will in this earth to take his word forth and to facilitate the preaching of the gospel and to lead worship from the heavens. The angels are ministers that God has created. It's interesting because people everywhere love angels. Popular culture actually embraces angels. I looked on the internet just for a few minutes 
It's amazing what you can find. Just do a YouTube search on angels and you'll get every kind of a video that you could ever imagine and more than you could ever think that people are fascinated with angels. Sadly, they love angels a lot more than they love Jesus sometimes. It's actually kind of rare to find someone who doesn't believe in angels. Even people who are not Christians will tell you they believe in angels. I've had people tell me, well, I'm a spiritual person. I'm not a Christian. I don't believe the Bible, but I'm a very spiritual person. Well, they got that part right. You are a spirit. God created you a spirit. You're a spirit being, and that's how God made you in his own image. But dear friends, I want you to understand that you are not saved by being spiritual. You're saved because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And his word is eternal. His word is final. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the all in all. Most everyone wants to claim spirituality. They're tripartite beings. We're all spirit, body, and soul. We possess a soul, but at our very core foundation, we are spirit. When we go to the scriptures, however, God tells us we are commanded to worship Jesus alone. We never worship any other entity other than Jesus. We bow before him as God. There is no half measure. To take Jesus as your Savior, you can't take him along with a plethora of, of other beliefs and religions. He is exclusive. His way is the way. His truth is the truth, and his life is the life. I want you to know, dear friends, that angels do play a part in our spiritual lives. God has designed it that way. There are angels all around us. The Bible teaches that what we just read. The book of Hebrews is just one example. Angels are special servants and ministers of God that bring his message. They accomplish his will in this earth that God has created. They actually intervene in the lives of God's people from time to time. Angels have a role when we die. Luke 16, 22, when Jesus talked about the rich man and Lazarus as they both had lived their lives in view of each other, when the rich man had ignored the plight of the man who sat begging outside of his palace, and he said that one day they both died and the angels came and transported Lazarus to the bosom of Abraham. So we believe, based upon this scripture and many others throughout the word of God, that angels have a role when we die. We've all heard someone testify before that maybe they saw angels just as they were leaving this earth or just as they were having a near-death experience. We believe that they are ministers of God that he sends to do special work upon this earth. Angels also bring judgment. Think about the death angel of the Exodus Passover when the plagues of, of Egypt had not had an effect on the Pharaoh and he was still enslaved and, and brutalized the people of God. And the final, uh, the final plague came, that death angel would transfer all through the, the streets of Egypt. And those who did not have the blood applied to their threshold and to their doorsteps, they would perish in judgment. Angels deliver judgment. They do God's will, bottom line. It's their sole purpose. It's what they do. They do the will of the Father. They do not seek their own will. They don't seek my will. They seek the will of God. Yeah. We must remember that the evil one, who is the author of sin, he's the author of the consequences of sin, he is and ever shall be an angel. His name is Lucifer. We call him Satan. We call him the devil. We call him the evil one. The Bible tells us that this evil one who seeks my destruction actually masquerades as an angel of light. He doesn't come with red horns and a tail and a pitchfork and try to scare you to death with fire breathing from his nostrils like he might in a Hollywood scare movie. Oh, he comes as an angel of light. He looks so good. He has such a good presentation that without discernment of the Holy Spirit and the natural mind, I could easily confuse him with the voice of the Lord. I could easily believe that it's God speaking to me if the Holy Spirit is not living inside me and showing me the truth in every situation. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, Paul told the people he was speaking with, and no wonder... For even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Oh, he looks so good. He looks so fine. Jewish thought, Judaism thought from ancient time was fascinated with angels. It's no wonder that this man who is writing to a group of Hebrew people, some of whom had turned to Jesus, others who were still in unbelief. 
It's no wonder that speaking to a specific group of Jews that he would address this issue of angels. It's no wonder that he would feel the need to differentiate between angels and Jesus. There was a long-standing misunderstanding about Jewish people and angels. The author wants to get it up front that yes, angels are special creations. They're ministers of God. They are used by God to make changes and to serve God's people. But Jesus Christ is the only one worthy of our worship and our adoration. There were people in those days who wanted to worship angels. They had this whole theology of angels. Look at YouTube. There's people today who worship angels. I saw everything from how to recognize the light of Gabriel and how to how to call up Michael and how to do all these things. It, it, it was very, very uh, concerning, if you would say, to say the least. Uh, if there's a whole theology behind angels that we see in this world today. Angels themselves, true angels, worship Jesus. They bow down before him. Anything that leads us to exalt an angel above Jesus Christ is demonic and satanic. It's anti-God. Anything that exalts an angel above Jesus Christ or makes an angel the center of our worship or attention or our focus, it is of the devil. It's the angel of light that's coming to us to misdirect our attention and our adoration. It's interesting. When Satan himself appeared to Jesus and took him out to the desert to tempt him, we all know that story. We've heard it since we were, were children, and we know that he tempted him at all points in the weakness of his flesh. He'd been fasting for days, and he was weak, and Satan thought that he could take advantage of him and begin to trick him, and he began to test his humanity, that weakness in Jesus that was due to his physical body being undernourished and, and probably dehydrated. The devil took him to a very high mountain in Matthew 4, 8. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their splendor. They could see for miles. He said, all this I'll give you if you will bow down and worship me. Now this is the devil talking to Jesus, the eternal living son of God. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended him. They came down to minister to him in his weakness. He had thrust the devil far away from him. You remember in the book of James, we talked about just a few weeks ago, we can resist the devil, and he will flee from us. He cannot put anything on us when we resist him, when we call him out in Jesus' name. That's what happened there when Jesus himself resisted the devil. We know that from the book of Jude, as we were just speaking in our, our previous series, but when the angel, archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, he did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but he said, the Lord rebuke you. You see, we have to ask God for discernment in this area because it can be so, uh, so uh, difficult at times. We have to ask him for discernment to teach us according to his word. We are not confused as the world is. We're not confused like the people who put those YouTube videos up. Our theology does not conform to our whimsy. Our theology does not conform to whatever we think might be right or whatever we think might be special or whatever we think might be very entertaining. Our popular culture is not rooted in the Word of God. We as Christians are rooted in His Word and we have authority over Satan and his angels. Now I want to take you deep into this text just for the next few minutes and I want to look at these points in the bulletin. I believe God has something for us. Number one, number one point, and they loosely track what's in the bulletin. We'll recap with that. But number one, angels are created beings. They are not eternal in the sense that they haven't always been. They weren't present always with God as Jesus was. Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit coexisted, co-eternal, co-powerful in eternity. But the angels were created. We don't know exactly when, probably sometime when the worlds were being created. But we do believe angels predate men. They are immortal. They will never die, but they have a definite beginning. They are heavenly worship leaders. We know that from the book of Revelation throughout. They prepare and they facilitate worship in heaven and on the earth. They are 
the book tells us right here in this passage that we read, verse 14, they are ministering spirits. They may be dispatched to bring comfort to God's people in times of crisis. Jesus was comforted by angels, not only at his temptation, but when he was facing the cross in the Garden of Gethsemane, when that he sweated great drops of blood when he spoke to the Father. And he said, oh, Father, if there's any other way, may this cup pass from me. But then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. When he surrendered himself to the Father's will and the Father's plan, the angels, the Bible tells us, came to minister to him. Can you imagine an angel taking the Son of God, Jesus, the man who was shaking, sweating great drops of blood, having just submitted himself to the cruel death of the cross, and an angel began to embrace him. Angels came down and they began to minister to him, to console him, to give him peace. God sends his angels to people in times of crisis very, very often. They're often dispatched in the human form. They appear among us incognito. The Bible tells us, it tells us in Hebrews, when we get to that verse, it says that many times we have entertained angels unawares. They're among us at times. I'm going to ask you this, and you can tell me about it after church, because I'm sure we got some stories right in here. Just about, excuse me, just about every Christian person I talk with has had a time in their life when they believe an angel may have made a divine intervention, either in an overt or maybe a more secretive way. Have you ever seen one? Have you ever felt one's presence? Many of us have a story. I'll tell you a couple of times in my life, I was thinking back over my life, and I believe it was in the year 2000. We had been to visit some friends up around Royston and actually having a uh, small group meeting with them and coming back just energized feeling the presence of the holy spirit and the girls were just little at that time we had a band similar to the one that i have now i don't think i had that band i had the one before that uh, we were almost home out there on mars hill road this is we were coming into our subdivision and it was a two-lane road at that time they made it four lanes since but we were almost home, I mean literally within a couple of blocks of being able to turn into our subdivision. And as I was driving just a normal rate of speed, 45 miles an hour, I guess, there came a Honda Accord over the hill. Must have been doing 75. Must have been doing 75, maybe 80. And that car began to come into my lane. And I, there was nowhere to go. There was a deep ditch on the other side of me. And I saw that, that car coming at us like a torpedo. And it was in this 10, 10 30 at night, and those headlights got closer and closer. And I said, Oh Lord Jesus. And I, I can remember jerking the wheel a little bit to the right, but there was nowhere to go. I should have gone in that ditch. But that car just, I can't explain how it missed my man. I can't explain. But I looked in my rearview mirror, and he smashed head on into the car behind me. A little Honda Del Sol, a little two seater car, knocked that car clean in the ditch. And we, oh dear Lord, we went up and actually turned into our subdivision, turned around and came straight back, got out and the boy in the Honda Accord, turned out he was dead. He was, he, I thought I felt a pulse when we got there, a thready pulse, and I began to pray with him. I said, oh son, I said, call out to Jesus, son. Call out to him. He was 17 years old. I said, if you can hear me, cry out to Jesus for your salvation right now. And I never got a response from him. Then the fellow that was down in the ditch, I began to, began to call to him, began to pray. And Angie and I, as we called 911 before they got there, we began to pray with those people and felt the presence of the Holy Spirit come. But I believe that there was an angelic visitation that, for, I can't explain it. My van moved. My van moved out of the way. There's no reason that they didn't hit me other than God. God sent someone or something to protect us in that moment. Another time I was in downtown Atlanta, I worked out at Georgia State University for about nine years, and I was on the streets every day going to lunch and going here to there. And I was just minding my own business. We were walking up to the Georgia Pacific building, which wasn't far from our office, to eat lunch one day in their cafeteria. They had good food. And as I walked, I remember being cold. We were all bundled up in overcoats, and there was a little old lady on the street. And I'd never seen her before. There were a lot of street preachers down there. There were different ones who would come out and play guitars and sing and preach, and I'd never seen her before. And she, she was bundled up in a coat and a hat, and I couldn't really see her face very much. And as I walked by, I, she looked at me and smiled. And I smiled back at her, as I often would, engage somebody with your eyes. And she, she looked to have been 75 or 80 at the time, I guess. And she had a little crumpled up piece of paper. It was one of those little notepads that with uh, perforations and where you write little notes to yourself. And she had scrawled with a pen on there. She had written 3 John, verse 1. Beloved, I would that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. And that had been kind of wadded up, looked like it had been in her pocket. She said, sir, this is for you. 
handed it to me. And I looked at it and I thought, well, thank you, man, thank you. And then as she, as I walked away, I began to read it. And it began to just wash over me. I said, this is from God. This is what God is speaking to me. Right now, I looked around, and it, it always happens. Everybody I talked to, she couldn't find her. Never saw her again. Never saw her again. That verse spoke directly to what I was going through in my life. I was having a terrible struggle in finances at that time. I was having a terrible struggle paying my bills. When my kids were little, I was probably making the best money of my life. But you remember how that was when your kids were little and you're just chasing those bills all the time and staying up late at night and working extra jobs. And I saw that. And she comforted my heart and it brought peace to my soul. I've always wondered. I can't prove it. I think maybe God sent an angel. You ever watch the show Touched by an Angel? Oh, now I won't vouch for the theology of that show. I think they were off, and I can always identify things. Well, they took a little bit of, of a creative license, a little bit of liberty in that show, but I couldn't watch that show without this squalling like a baby. <laughs> Did y'all do that? Touched by an Angel, Roma Downey, Highway to Heaven, old Michael Landon, the angel that was always going around with, with, uh, with his buddy, and they were going around doing good deeds and it's always about trying to earn your wings. Well, that's that's just legend there. That's just fun story. But we're fascinated by angels, but yet just because we read tales and we see Hollywood movies and different things that depict this, don't let that steal the truth from you because they're here. I don't worship them, and I don't to emphasize them because we emphasize Jesus here, but they're probably still here right now. They meet with us, folks. They lead us in worship. There's probably angels among us right now. We may see some on the way home. God says to know that they're there. They're ministering spirits that he has sent. We will be served by them. Listen to this. Angels are not related directly to the human race. Angels may have a visage similar to a human. They may come in a human form, but their substance is very, very different. Humans have never been, nor will a human ever become an angel. I know sometimes we speak and it's, it's sweet and I don't, I don't particularly feel the need to correct someone on this, but people will say, well, so-and-so earn their wings. They become an angel. No, that's not scriptural. People don't become angels. We will never be angels. Angels are created angels and they're completely different in substance than human beings. Angels watch us. The Bible tells us that angels are actually in awe of the children of God. Angels watch us and they are just amazed by God's plan of redemption because angels have no need of being redeemed. Angels are simply ministering spirits that God has designed for a special purpose. Listen to this from the book of Job. He's talking about way back at the foundation of the world. God is speaking with Job, straightening it out on his theology. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand who marked off its dimensions. Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set, or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together, and all the angels shouted for joy. The angels were present at creation. Angels predate humanity. Angels were created before men were created, and they were created to live forever just like we are. They are not deity. They are not objects of worship. When their presence is revealed, it can be overwhelming. The Apostle John, when he was about to write the book of Revelation, he stood on the shores of Patmos and he began to see the vision unfold. And he saw an angel come to him and just instinctively, John hit his knees. He hit his knees in front of that angel and began to bow down as if to worship him. I guess he thought Jesus was coming. The angel said, get up, get up. Don't do that here. You don't bow down to me. You don't worship me, son. You are, you are to worship Jesus and worship Jesus only. He said, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book, worship God. So an angel is always going to direct you to worship God. Worship Jesus. We have the birthright of being able to come directly into God's presence to worship by the power of the Holy Spirit living in us. We don't need an intermediary like an angel to lead us there. We come directly to God. It's our birthright by the blood of Jesus Christ. And angels, they are wonderful, wonderful servants, but they're not omnipotent. They're not all powerful. They are not omnipresent. They are not in every place at once. They are not omniscient. They don't know everything. They are not equal to or superior to Jesus Christ. 
Colossians 2.18, Paul told the people, let no one disqualify you insisting on asceticism and worship of angels. Going on in detail about visions puffed up without reason by his sensuous mind. That's those YouTube videos again. Yeah. That's those new age people who worship angels. That's those new age people who want to claim spirituality without Jesus. Puffed up in their own religion. Their own religious fervor without a shred of the truth. Three angels named in scripture. And I'm going to try to end on this. We'll get to the rest of this next week. Number one is Michael. Michael. I know a lot of people named Michael. We name a lot of people after that angel, don't we? Michael is known as a warrior. He is specifically connected with the nation of Israel as the protector of Israel. Every time we see Michael, he's doing something for the people of God, the nation of Israel. <coughs> he acts as their protector and as God's emissary. He is one who slays the enemies of God. He is a protector of God's word. Way back in Daniel, in the book of Daniel, Michael came to Daniel. As Daniel set to fast and to pray to seek the answers from God that were affecting his life, affecting the life of Israel in the country of Babylon, the book of Daniel 10, verse 13 says, The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia. It's talking about angelic battles in the heavenlies. God had dispatched an angel, another angel, not Michael, to Daniel to minister the truth and to minister comfort and peace to his soul as he sought the Lord. And the Bible tells us here that he was stopped by the prince of Persia. That's one of those principalities and powers that we talked about in the book of Ephesians that rule in the air. We're talking about the devil's angels. We're talking about demonic activity that had stopped the angel of God. And there was great war in the heavenlies. Well, God saw what was going on. And he sent on Michael with that sword drawn. And Michael slew that demon who was stopping the answers of God from coming. And he made it to Daniel to bring comfort to his soul. Jude talks about the angel Michael. He said, the Lord rebuke you when he began to battle with Satan over the body of Moses. There's another angel. We know Gabriel. You all heard of Gabriel. I got a little boy on my bus named Gabriel. I've known a lot of people named Gabriel. We name our kids after these angels from the scriptures. Gabriel is connected intimately and specifically with God's presence. He is dispatched with special messages that bring comfort and peace and reveal God's will. Let's go all the way back to Mary when she first found out what was happening with her, how that God was going to use her to be the mother of Jesus. Luke 1, 19, the angel said to him, actually this was to Joseph, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. You see, Gabriel spends time in the presence of God. It's almost, when I read this, I believe that he's God's right-hand angel. He's the one that's there before the throne, guarding the throne of God. And when God has a special message for some one of his people, he sends Gabriel with that message. It doesn't say this in the scripture, but historically Christians have thought and Jews have always thought that Gabriel will be the one to sound the horn when the ages are complete, when God says it's time for Jesus to come and the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord in Christ, it will be Gabriel blowing that horn. Sounds good to me because he stands there in God's presence. Okay, we finished the first point today. I'm going to save the rest of this for next week. The servants of God's people. That's the second point. Angels are servants of God's people. Now, before we go, let's look at this bulletin just for a moment. I want to emphasize a couple of points here. I think all this is encapsulated here. And uh, our time got away from us a little bit today. Angels are created by God to serve him and his purposes on heaven and in earth. Let's look down through there. Jesus Christ is superior. We talked about that. Angels are active in the earth at God's command. They watch us. They're watching us in everything we do. And they're ready to intervene in our lives at God's direction. They don't do anything on their own accord. They hear what the Father says and they help us. They're there to help us along this way, to bring us truth, to bring us discernment. Angels are not to be the object of our adoration or fascination. They operate in the background, often without our direct observation or knowledge. Their purpose is to glorify Jesus and obey him. Boy, that's our purpose too, isn't it? Glorify Jesus and obey him. And in process, we will enjoy him. Enjoy Jesus. At times, we may realize that our lives have been influenced or touched by an angel. The appropriate response is when we see this, fall on our knees and worship Jesus. 
worship Jesus, give him the glory. The angels are his servants. They're sent by him under direct orders. We're never instructed to seek out angels. We're told to be aware of their presence and their partnership in God's will and the gospel message. Oh, this is maybe the most important one too. Angels will never contradict God's clear instructions and commandments that are given in his word. Subject everything you hear, everything you see, everything that is suggested to you to this right here, the eternal word of God. God does not contradict himself. He has given us everything we need to know for life and for godliness. Amen? Amen. Are you ready to worship him in spirit and truth? Amen. Are you ready to go forth and not look for angels, but know that they're out there working on your behalf? Angels watching over us. Angels doing things for us. We may not even realize it. Oh, we worship Jesus. We thank him for this wonderful, wonderful way that he works in our lives. Amen? Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this word of truth, God. And I pray that, Lord, wherever we have said something that may be carnal or something that may just be opinion-based, Lord, let it fall to the ground like dross. But, Lord, as the eternal truth of God, as your word has gone forth, Lord, I pray that you would just bury it in our soul and in our heart so much that it will come up anytime we need it, anytime we're challenged, anytime when we need to understand how much you love us, that the truth of God's word would bubble up in our soul. Lord, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Ooh, glory to God. He's good, isn't he? Amen. Let's sing a final song, Tony. Let's do uh, 370, <coughs> Victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. What a great way to cap off this day. I heard an old, old story How the Savior came from glory How he gave his life for Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood atoning Yeah. Right. 